Hey everyone, uh, so welcome to the second video inside of this libgdx tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about object detection and preventing two objects from passing in together. So this is how uh, your game is going to look like by the end of the video. So you have your person, right? And uh, you would notice that, yeah, so you have your person and it can move around, right? But when it goes near the brick, you begin to realize it doesn't work. It just stays there stuck. So that's exactly what we want, right? We don't want an object to, you know, uh, move through a brick, right? Now you might be noticing that there's a bit of pixels over here that are like, it's not, it's not proper. That's because the image I used was accidentally a bit too big. Here, you can see the image over here, right? So it's a bit too big. So when you guys are picking out your images, make sure that there's not a lot of space from the image and the borders, all right? Uh, with that being said, let's start this video. So first things first. So first I'm gonna talk about what I did in the past two day, in the past day or two. So what we did last time was that we learned how to control a video uh, a player with the WASD keys. And I have the video on that and it's linked in the description and you can just follow the series along. Now, what we need to do today is create a collision and prevent the player from moving along. So first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and grab my brick dot. This is the wrong one. Yeah, brick dot JPEG. You guys can get any photo you want, as I said earlier. What you're going to want to do is load it in as a texture, all right? And then you're going to want to draw it at a certain coordinate. So I chose 100, comma 100. You also need to. I would suggest you respecify the player's x and y coordinates. That's what I did to 400, comma 300. Everybody has different screens, so I can't really, you know, give you guys proper advice. Uh, the next thing you're just going to want to do is just draw it in, all right? So I explained how to do all of this in the previous video, so it shouldn't be too hard. All right, and now if we currently move along, uh, it just waltzes right through. Now, here's how we're going to prevent that from happening. The first thing we're going to want to do is create some rectangles. So you guys might be wondering, yeah, so what exactly are rectangles? So let's suppose if I have a player, right? And I have some ground, or I don't know, I have a wall. Well, let's do a wall because that's more practical in the situation, right? So this is basically how our game looks, but a lot better, right? So what we need to do is basically draw a very small, thin, uh, invisible uh, rectangle between the player and the object itself. The more rectangular the object is, the better. So in more complex games, they use stuff like polygons, but because this is just a beginner's tutorial, this is what we can do. Now what we're going to do is just check to see if these two rectangles are collided. If they are, we're going to have to move them back. All right, move back. And to do this, we're and I'm going to explore all of this right now. So get back into your Android Studio file. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create two rectangles, one for the player and one for the ground itself. So to do this, go into your main, uh, into your class and do this right before any overrides and go ahead and type in rectangle 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 and then the uh then you're gonna write player uh player underscore rect all right and you're gonna do the you're gonna want to do this exact same thing for the ground as well so you're gonna go rectangle ground underscore rect now, the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and create two floats. So these floats are going to be called previous x and previous y. Previous y. So the reason why we're creating a previous x and a previous y is for one main reason. If the person were to get stuck inside of a rectangle, we want him to be able to get out. Now, in order to do this, we want to store every single previous step and put them back at the previous step. All right, so that's the main reason why. In fact, we can actually start this off right now. So what you're gonna wanna do is go into the if else statements, and you're gonna wanna do is before you even add to the x or y coordinate or subtract, you're gonna wanna go previous y and set that equal to the current value of, you know, previous y or previous x, depending on what's being modified. All right. And I'm just going to repeat the exact same for S, D, and A, D. All right. But for A or for A and D, it's going to be previous X instead of previous Y. 
All right, and boom. All right, now that we've successfully created that, now the next thing we can do is go ahead and create, uh, go ahead and initialize our rectangles. Even though we've made our rectangles right over here, we still need to give them a proper value. Otherwise, uh, it's, you're gonna lead to a null error. So go into your show method, and what you're gonna wanna do is go and go player underscore rect, player rect, and set that equal to new rectangle, uh, new rectangle, and that's going to be the player x, comma player y, and then what you're going to want to do is just get the player dot. You're going to want to do is first of all get its width, and then you're going to want to do is get its uh, height. So player dot get height, and you're going to want to just slap this on for the uh, ground itself. Now for the ground. You're going to want to just, instead of putting player x and player y, what you're going to want to instead do is put in the coordinates that you would put for the ground itself. So if you guys have that in a variable, then you can just, you know, link the variable. I'm just going to put in two raw numbers, which are just 100 and 100. 100. And then you're going to want to just do ground.getWidth and ground.getHeight. All right. Perfect. Uh, you're also going to want to take the previous x and y, and you're going to want to just initialize them as zero because that could also lead to a null error. So previous x is equal to zero, and then previous y set that also equal to zero. All right, I'm just going to make the spacing a bit cleaner. All right, perfect. Now what we're going to want to do is go. At, so we've already drawn the ground in the player. What we will want to do now is just set up a simple if statement. What this if statement is going to do is it's just going to check if they're being overlapped. So we're going to put that right over here, right below, right before any of the WASD keys. So we're going to go if gdx dot input dot is key pr or wait no 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 sorry no we're going to go if the ground.rect uh, overlaps. So if it overlaps, dot overlaps with the player rectangle, all right, then what you're going to want to do is first of all, I'm just going to want to print out system.out.println, and it's just going to say collided. I'm doing this just for debugging purposes, but you don't really have to do this. Uh, okay. And then what I'm going to want to do is just take player x, or player y, is equal to previous y, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to repeat the same for player x is equal to previous x. Okay, and the next and final thing I'm going to want to do is constantly update the rectangle's values. So to do this, all I'm going to do is copy the, wait, oh yeah, and also this has to be ground rect. All right, yeah, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy these two. I'm just going to paste them right at the bottom, and I'm going to modify them a bit. So what I mean by modifying is that each time it renders, I want the rectangle's values to change proportionate to where the player is located. For the rectangle, it doesn't really change, but I would still suggest to put it at the bottom, because if you want, if you, you were to like make a game where you can move the objects, then that would be different, right? And for player rect, what I'm going to want to do is just, yeah, I'm just going to want to paste it here once more because the player x and y coordinates usually do get modified. All right. Okay. Now, the next, now what I'm going to want to do is just run this and this should work. All right. So, whoops. Let me just minimize this. All right. Yeah, okay. Now, if I were to move this around and put this right over here, as you can see, uh, it doesn't move. Instead, what it does is it slightly moves the player itself, if, and that's the previous location. And I can still move it around. All right, now if I were to move it, yeah, so it, it gets stuck. That's because the image is too big. But yeah, now we've successfully created object collisions within libgdx. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe.